Okay, welcome back. Uh, let's double click on the project panel to make more space and switch back to the WordPress panel. And now we are ready for a special treat. And that is add to cart section for variable product. So usually you know to 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 override these templates by hand you would kind of have to be really really keen on doing it. It's very kind of not, not quite complicated. Um, I know because I had to really dig into uh, WooCommerce to figure out how this happens. And so first of all, what's variable product? That's product with multiple variations. So for example, it has a size attribute and then it has multiple sizes and colors. And well, let's go to, to WooCommerce to illustrate this. So cap is not, but beanie, our beanie is a variable product. So edit product. So here we have variations. So based on the attributes of color and size, we have a bunch of uh, kind of permutations, product variations, and each variation can have its own image, it can have its own price description um, yeah so it, there can be you know imagine having sizes and colors five of each that, that would be like 25 product variations but probably not all with unique prices and so so anyway let's go back to view the product so what we need our add to cart section has to let us select the size and the color of, uh, of the product we want and then the quantity and you know we, we need to be able to add it to cart. So let's go back to PineGrow and do that. So here we will we have a form so add to cart needs to be or it needs to contain a form. So Let's select the form that, that kind of encloses everything and we say product add to cart. And here we also say what's the product type that we want to implement. So we will first do variable and simple later. So simple it's product with no variations, it's just one variation like product, I don't know, a, a cup. Just buy the cup, no colors, no sizes. Okay, and here you see why this is complicated? Because we get, for variable product, we will get like quantity input template that we will override and then variation it to card button, variation and variable. So it's like four templates that are kind of interweaved, interwoven together um, to implement the custom add to cart section. Okay, well I hope I didn't scare you too much. I just wanted you know to sound it complicated so that I sound kind of feels better for me. <laughs> you know a pine grow feels more advanced. Uh, but no, it's a joke. It's really complicated b behind the, the, the hood, under the hood, but not so complicated for us here, thanks to PineGrow. So, okay, first we have to set the product type, that's variable. And next section con con shows the list of attributes and, and selectors for these attributes. So what we need to do is select repeated items. So, and here we see this is the element 
that should be repeated for every attribute. So it's a, a div that has label and then it has uh, the select and it also has the clear link. So this is the element we want to repeat for each attribute. Attribute being color, size, whatever. Okay. Then, okay, what is the label? Label will be the label. That's easy. And the selector. Okay, we need to select the select element that will let us choose one of the options. And then clear link. That's here. Yeah? Okay. So then, a question. Oh, we'll, we'll do that later. So what's next? Quantity and button. So we need... And, and here, here's, here's what makes it a bit complicated. Kind of WooCommerce requires a specific HTML structure for its JavaScript code to work correctly. So it's kind of very opinionated when it comes to this. So and Pinegrow here helps us to come up with the correct structure. And when you would, I all, you know, this the layout here is already prepared, it already compatible with those requirements. But when we would design, a kind of, we would convert. Uh, uh, add to cart section that was just visually designed into WooCommerce, we would probably need to rearrange the layout a bit, like add some divs and wrappers, uh, but nothing so major. So, okay, what do we need? So, we need, first of all, we need a wrapper element that contains the selected variant. And the selected variant is, is this. It's information about what which variant we selected by, you know, choosing these attributes. So if we select here like XL red, it will say your selected product is XL red uh, bini or whatever is the name for that variation. So that's, that's the selected variant. And then quantity field and add to cart button need to also be in this element. So here we what we have, okay, this is just uh, like the color, we will ignore it for now. So here we have a row, and the row has a column, and then this column has a deal for the selected variant. And then it has a row for the quantity and another column with the button. So this column fulfills the requirements of being a wrapper of selected variant, quantity field, and add to cart button. So let's select it. And we can we can see in the tree it helps us. So I'll go so see this one. It's, it's a column, and then it has the selected variant, has the row with quantity, and uh, the column with button. So it's selected. So this element now became our selected variation wrapper. Selected variation wrapper. Okay. So next the wrapper element that contains the quantity field and the add to cart button. So these two need to be kind of together. They need a wrapper. They can't be like, you know, like, like now here is the quantity and here is the, the button. So they need a wrapper. So either we could do a div here and put both of them in, or maybe, maybe we can just change, move the column for where the button is into the row, um, 
with quantity and, and the input field. And everything is looks okay, so let's use that as a wrapper, the, this row. Yeah, you see the row, it has the, the label, it has the input field and it has the button. So it's a quantity and button wrapper. Okay, quantity field. So select the element that contains the quantity input field, not the input field itself. So we should not select the input field, but we should select its parent element. So in this case, this one. And then, okay, we will do this later. And then add to card button should be the button. that adds the element to the card. Okay, so this is an variation display template. That, that's this, it, the template for displaying the selected variation. But let's, let's leave it for now, because this is optional. And let's go and export um, the page. And let's go in here and see what will happen. Okay, so. We have color, let's select color red. We have the size, let's select small. Okay. And here you see we, we got we got the information displayed. So what, what's this? Why why is it here? So that's a kind of placeholder to make our design, you know, when we are designing, we need more rows, more attributes, but we don't actually need to export it because this is the repeated, repeated attribute up here. So what's this? We don't need it, right? It's just placeholder with, for like, which helps us designing the page. So we will just say, don't export it. And then the, the, the selected variant, we didn't implement it yet. So for now, let's also say don't export. We'll export it later and go back. Okay, so now we can't press because it's not selected yet. Choose an option, red, small, Oh, here it is, red, small, and now we can add it to cart. The bini has been added to your cart. And clear, clear works as well. But you see like the, this display doesn't really fit into our design, right? And that's what we can customize with, with, with this. So let's first remove don't export and go back to the product add to cart. And now we will say template element. So which element represents the template? So this is, it needs to be kind of wrapper because only the content of this element is exported. So we select this deal. And then description will be here, description, price, will be price, availability will be here. And then, okay, if it's not available, then we want, see this element. And this, ex this exports their parents as well. So let's go back, Bini, and now if we select red and small, you see, we get it here. Um, but this information is still displayed, so we probably need to change something. Let's go back, and for not available, okay, we, we shouldn't just select the paragraph, we should select the whole 
kind of the parent that we want. So this alert and save again. Right, small, and now it's here. But the pricing still has WooCommerce style, so we can say remove price styling. Select. And here it is. And of course, we can use our own styling to, to make this prettier. And we got, you know, a functioning add to cart, custom add to cart section for our variable product. And let's take a look at the code so that we can appreciate what Pinegrow kind of did for us. So first of all, we have like the the variable add to cart, that, that's the top template. You know, it's showing the attributes and, and yeah, like the clear icon, and then it's using the calling WooCommerce uh, actions that then display uh, further templates like add to cart button. And then this dis displays the global quantity input. And then the last variation displays the template for displaying the selected variation. So here we can see our alert that has the um, description price availability. And then in case of problems, we, we have um, the, the information here. So yeah, we, we did all of that, you know, just by, by setting up this information and then Pinegrow took care of all the difficult heavy lifting uh, of creating a custom add to cart section. So, okay, here it is. And we will see later how this is also connected with the image gallery. So if our selected variant has an image, it will get displayed in the gallery. But we'll do this later when, when we do the image gallery. Okay, so for so much for now. Hope you enjoyed doing the add to cart section. And in next video, we will do add to cart section for a simple product.